What is going on guys, Politics Gaming here, and today I'm doing a new tutorial for uh, Power and Revolution. Today I'm going to be doing an energy tutorial. Basically, energy is the most important thing a part of the game. There are um, a lot of things that actually go into energy, and there's a lot of sectors that are actually dependent off of your energy. So right now where I'm looking at my own department of energy, and so what we have is that... Um, the basic thing to talk about is that there are 12 energy sectors in the latest installment of Eversim's uh, Geopolitical Simulator series. These uh, sectors are coal, biomass, fossil electricity, geothermal, hydraulic, nuclear, wind, fuel, oil, natural gas, and uranium. Those are the sectors. Those are the economic sectors of the game, right? All over here. So only about eight of them are actually usable to um, develop your electricity. These are fossil, nuclear, hydroelectricity, onshore, offshore wind, geothermal, biomass, and solar. All right, and then so we also have another thing which is called the search for resources. The, um, this is basically your uh, search for, to basically develop your uh, oil and natural gas fields in uh, Power and Revolution. So you have only about uh, five of these. So these are oil platforms, oil wells. Um, this is for uh, just conventional oil that you um, dig out of the ground and pump out of the ground and using your, uh, your uh, resources. Okay, and then so you have the gas wells. This is for natural gas, to dig up natural gas and it develops your natural gas sector. And then so you have right here shale oil and shale gas. Basically, these are legalized through um, legislation on uh, non-conventional gas and oil. Non-conventional gas and oil resources include shale gas and oil, sandstone and oil shale. The global potential for these resources is huge. The methods used to extract these resources, hydraulic fracturing and surface mining pose an environmental threat causing air and water pollution and contamination. Um, these, this has uh, three different options. Um, you can uh, go into it slowly by uh, doing tests and exploration is authorized. However, exploitation of these resources is banned. Um, or you can go to exploitation is authorized, which the United States already has legalized and they already have a very developed um, shale oil gas um, oil uh, thing. So um, the next thing we're going to be talking about is... Uh, Renewable and non-renewable resources. And then, so as in real life, the game does feature renewable and non-renewable alternatives to how the player can re produce energy in the game. Non-renewable energies are sources of energy that will run out in the future. But again, for the purposes of the game, these resources can be subsidized in the player's production and percentage of the world will increase. So I can come over here and subsidize coal by about like maybe a hundred billion dollars in my a production for it will increase um, compared to the world, however, and it would actually give me a good profit margin, or actually it would increase uh, the amount of uh, coal I have um, in relation to trade contracts, but it does not, and I've tried this before, it does not uh, affect your trade balance. So um, one can be familiar with uh, something called the primary sector of every economy, primary resources and geopolitical simulator, Includes everything that is mineable, and this goes out into the industrial sector for mineable resources, and also goes out into farming. Um, I believe uh, one sector in there, uh, maybe fishing, um, is a uh, primary. Yeah, fishing is primary. Um, but um, primary resources in the energy sector for a geopolitical simulator include coal, coal oil, natural gas, and uranium. Uranium is uh, the only resource that you really need to build um, nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers, but it is actually a primary the primary resources that is needed to produce nuclear energy. So if you do not grow this sector right here and increase this percentage right here, um, or at least uh, get a positive trade balance, which I, I've actually done that as a Japan um, in one of my live streams, um, but this, um, the consumption for uranium will go up if you can, if you develop your nuclear energy sector. Um, 
And then so next we actually have renewable energies. So renewable energies includes biomass, geothermal energy, solar energy, uh, wind energy, which includes um, onshore and offshore energy, um, and nuclear. However, um, as I said before, nuclear does need uranium, um, but at the same time, they do count as a uh, renewable resource because you can actually just continue to produce um, as much as you actually want. Um, so it is unknown, honestly, it, and I've kind of tried this before. Again, my whenever I did try it, the production for it went up. I always thought that you all had a cap for every country to where um, it would actually go to. Um, but it is unknown whether the country can actually run out of a specific non-renewable energy, such as reaching peak oil or simply running out of coal or uranium. The player can, however, like I said before, subsidize the sector by $100 billion, and this will allow the player to control a lot of the world's production. But this does not, as I said before, again, I'll say it again, it does not affect the trade balance. The trade balance will not be affected by that. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the transportation of oil and natural gas. There are two ways to deliver oil and gas to your neighbors, though shipping it across the ocean makes it even more expensive. Transportation costs are included in the export and import uh, prices of your contract. So if I wanted to come over here to Japan, go to new contract, and if I wanted to sell them oil, then this price right here is actually um, included as the shipping price. Um, this is actually just the um, amount of money that it actually takes to um, export to another country, maybe like across the ocean, that you can actually not build an oil pipeline with. To waive these costs, the player has the option to build an oil or gas pipeline into neighboring countries. Before the construction of a pipeline, you must first ask permission to build a pipeline through your selected countries. Building a pipeline from Russia to China only requires one permission, but Iran to Libya would require the player to have a good economic relationship with Iraq, Jordan, Israel, Egypt, and Libya. However, you can kind of cheat through that, and then uh, I did not actually uh, put this in. Um, but you can actually possibly build right through here. This is extreme, an extremely narrow strait, and it would actually um, benefit um, just trying to go into Egypt, just like that. Um, so... Upon completing this, the players can negotiate in the commercial phase of the project, meeting with leaders that the pipeline crosses to sell them their oil or gas. The profit margin that the players are awarded with is extraordinarily higher since the oil and gas only has to travel from the oil or gas well to the national borders of the country you want to sell it to. In turn, transportation costs are almost wiped away. The sale of net contracts in oil and natural gas gives you the option to use the pipeline along with a second option, these options are transportation by train or use of the pipeline. Though a pipeline only allows between 8 to 12 million tow to be delivered. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can actually do this for Canada. So if I want to do sell, and if, I, if not, then I'm just going to go ahead and cheat and just build a pipeline as an example. Okay, so that's oil. So let's try natural gas. Okay, so I'm going to have to build an oil pipeline. Um... Yeah, let's see if I can actually, okay, I can actually not do it with uh, Mexico, but I'm going to do it with Canada. So I'm going to click on Canada, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the next couple of days. And it just takes them one day. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here, and I'm going to go ahead and build an oil pipeline from here to here. Simple sort pipeline. And I'm going to go ahead and put that project on high speed. And I'm going to go ahead and OK that. And then we're going to go ahead and go to over to the next two days. Oil. OK, so here we go. Um, so right here, what we are looking at is oil tanker or train. So basically, this is talking about the um, transportation of uh, oil via oil tanker. So just a regular shipping container. Um, that a sh regular ship that actually just uh, contains oil, 
or just trains. So our trains can actually just transport the oil all the way up into Canada, or we can use it by um, transporting it through pipe 4797. And then so we have transport transportable volume of 72 million tow. So I guess it does vary, and I'm going to have to change that on the wiki. Um, so this is a what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and go over to oil tanker and train it. Let's compare the prices. Okay, so I guess it's not really showing. Oh, okay, okay, the sale price. Okay, so let's go over here. Oil tanker and train, if we were to go by the default um, thing, um, the default uh, transportation um, via oil tanker or train, our sale price is going to be eight. 876 so that's going to be our sale price which actually i mean i think it would probably be a little more uh, expensive so and then if we go over here we have a bigger profit margin so we can actually just transport it via the pipeline um and then we can actually just uh, go for this right here um 789 that we wouldn't get that because um it's way way above canada's uh, purchase price of oil and then plus canada already has a lot of oil so that is the transportation of oil um, via pipeline or via train or oil tanker. So we're going to go ahead and pause it right here. I'm really not wanting to deal with riots right now. Um, so I am actually going to get rid of that. So the next one is we're going to, the next uh, thing we're going to be talking about is uh, energy consumption in power and revolution. So energy consumption is always rising and falling as a nation in the nation as the player progresses through the game. Energy consumption is measured in terawatt hours. The national production of terawatt hours never goes up unless the player invests in one of the eight power plants buildable in the game. Consumption is measured by the ec by the activity in economic sectors that require electricity to function. As these products need electricity to work or the factories that they are made in are increasing the production when you subsidize them. With consumption always going up or down in some cases, the player must adhere and adjust their energy policy with the goal of producing more electricity than you consume. To which, to switch from fossil fuels to renewable energy or to ensure consumption never goes, goes above production. So um, right here, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about um, energy production and consumption. So um, there are several countries that you actually um, have a deficit of energy production. Um, this is because you are um, producing a lot of electri electric production. And so the only way to really do that is just to in invest in energy. And um, my recommendations, honestly, um, for the energy sectors that you should actually invest in is solar. Because solar produces the most um, energy for any other of these, except for nuclear. Nuclear usually produces the most um, out of any other sector. So, um, fossil, I think, does produce a lot. However, it is extremely expensive. And it also increases the uh, deficit that you actually have, um, if you already have it, for um, oil, natural gas, and uranium. I mean, not uranium, uh, coal. So this actually, um, and actually I can uh, come over here. So, oh, not biomass, um, fossil electricity. So if we come over here, the um, list of sectors involved in the production process of fossil electricity is coal, natural gas, and uranium. I mean, why do I keep saying uranium? Oil. Um, so these are actually extremely expensive to actually create. And at the same time, they do produce a lot of electricity. Um, but at the same time, they um, do um, use a lot of your uh, coal, natural gas, and oil. Um, so as I'm going to go ahead and list um, the um, industrial and services sectors that actually um, use electricity directly... And I will post a picture of it up right now. So the list of sectors that actually use electricity, this is going to be it for um, energy. I mean, not energy, uh, industry. Aeronautical construction, automobile construction, electronic components, naval construction, paper, 
steel, synthetic fibers, tire industry, utility vehicle construction. That's it for in industry. And then for services, air transportation, numerical networks and infrastructures, uh, railway transportation, telecom operators, and urban transportation use electricity directly. However, this is another thing that I actually kind of listed on the wiki, is that if you come over here and um, come over to maybe, say, uh, electronic components. No, I think it was materials. Okay, no. Did I actually... I actually didn't list that. Electricity, so I actually didn't list that in the wiki. Okay, so I'm going to go to household appliances. And so, um, household appliances actually uses uh, resources from other sectors. So it needs steel, plastic, um, electrical materials, electrical components, and nanorobotics. So, um, my theory is that since it uses uh, steel, electrical materials, and components, it actually, I have a feeling that... Um, Increasing the production on household appliances would actually create a deficit with steel, electrical materials, and electrical components. So I feel like that a deficit in here, you would have to, in turn, create um, more production in these sectors. And in turn, it would create um, more consumption for energy. So that's my theory, is that um, it just it's kind of like a paradox, um, but that's enough out of that, I'm gonna go ahead and come back to energy. And then so that's basically my um, tutorial on energy production. Um, I will provide a link to the costs of, uh, your, of every single power plant in the game. So for example, and I'm gonna just go out, list off uh, uh, two of these. Um, so, and I'm gonna provide the link to the rest of them because it is way too long and way too complicated to even explain but um, basically the financial costs of uh, power plants most do not need a secondary resource to produce electricity such as most renewable resources like wind and solar so like solar doesn't need steel to produce um, fossil electricity does require you to have coal oil and natural gas to produce it um, I feel like one is fine but it's just kind of like it's good to have all three um, which if you do increase, if you actually want your country to be, um, relied off of, uh, uh, fossil electricity, it would actually in turn increase the amount of, uh, um, need for oil, natural gas, and, uh, coal that you would actually, um, need. So you would actually have to import the difference. Um, so my recommendation at the same time is, uh, producing solar. Um, it's not that expensive. So, like, I'm going to come down to solar. Um, solar, this is uh, accounting for basic um, manpower. Solar energy only costs $26.3 million to produce over a year. And then $132 million over the next five years. And then solar energy always, always produces one terawatt with every facility that it makes. And my recommendation for uh, where to place these, so I'm going to go ahead and look at that. Um, annual reimbursement, um, so there is actually a difference since I'm actually paying these in a, as the United States. I think um, it, it's different between from country to country, and I think it's different according to inflation rate. So solar, my recommendation of where to put that is as close to the equator as you can possibly make it. So... Um, as the United States, I would definitely recommend putting solar power plants in uh, southern Florida, um, you know, outside of Miami, southern Texas, um, and along the southern states um, and uh, the southern sides of these states. So like southern California, southern Arizona, uh, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. So I'm going to try to see how much uh, it would actually do. So... Average, see, you got average right there. And then all the way in Florida, you actually got uh, uh, good. So I think you actually have the Virgin 
islands that I can possibly put these on. Yeah, so let's see. So it's actually good. And then let's see what it does right here. Okay, good. So that's my tutorial on uh, energy and energy production in the game. I'm going to provide a link to the uh, Wikia for Geopolitical Simulator that I actually created for the purpose of this video. Um, and I just kind of got bored one night and I just created an entire um, basic uh, tutorial on how to um, manage your energy sector in the game. So guys, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off like that. Guys, if you like this channel, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And suggest more tutorials in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video of Geopolitical Simulator 4.